paralysis. What is it? How do you do it? And are there any dangers you should know before we actually do it? Well, yes, but we're going to cover that all today. So what is electrolysis? Well, electrolysis is defined as being a chemical decomposition by passing an electrical current through a solution that contains ions. And what is an ion? It's just essentially an atom or a group of atoms that has an electric charge. We are working with H2O, water, and we're going to be splitting the oxygen and the hydrogen part using an electrical current. Now this is the most common form of electrolysis that you can do yourself, and we're going to do the most basic safe way so that you can do it very quickly and easily and you can make some pretty bubbles out of the water and actually split the molecules apart using science here. Yeah. But then after that we're going to do the unsafe method using table salt and we're going to go into the chemistry of why that produces chlorine gas. So let's go. We're going to start off with distilled water and magnesium salt. Now if you're doing this at home make sure you use magnesium salt and not table salt because again the table salt is the thing that creates chlorine gas and you don't want that. You want oxygen not chlorine gas. If you're doing this at home you need a 9 volt battery, some sort of diode, so some screws, container to hold the water in, some distilled water, and magnesium salt. The container that you use should be heat resistant. So I'm using a Pyrex beaker just because that's what I have laying around, but you could use a mug or a heat resistant cup. So now we have a cup full of water. Now if we were to stick uh, our diodes in there and actually run an electrical current through the water, nothing would happen. Because oddly enough, distilled water is not very conductive. In order to actually make this water conductive enough to do anything at all, we need to add in some salt. Now we are using magnesium salt here, and magnesium salt will add enough conductivity to the water to allow the electrical current to go through the water and split the molecules into their individual ions, which is what we need for electrolysis. The next step is to try and make this completely dissolved in the water. Now I'm going to stir it for a little bit here, but it takes a lot of time. So instead of trying to stir it continually, I'm just going to use some lab equipment. This is a little magnetic stir that I picked up for my own personal lab. It essentially just stirs it up for you. So this is completely unnecessary, but I like using my little lab tools. So here we go. <laughs> if you do stir it yourself, make sure you mix it enough so that you can't see any of the Epsom salts sitting on the bottom. It's not going to affect the experiment per se, but it just adds another layer that could go wrong. Make sure all of your salt is dissolved in the solution. The next step is to figure out a way to get the electricity to pass through the solution, thus creating the electrolysis. So you could just have two spoons sticking in the water and then touch uh, each spoon to the two sides of a 9 volt battery and it would do the exact same thing. What I'm doing here is I'm just attaching some rubber bands on either side of the battery and then pushing the stainless steel screws or bolts that I have set up here so that it'll hold it steady and it's essentially just creating really long poles attached to either end of the battery. And for me, this is the easiest way to do it. I have one go down the middle just to make sure that they don't touch each other. I put some sticky tack in between the two bolts because this ensures they don't touch each other and short out the electric current because if the current shorts out there won't be any electrolysis because it's easier for the electrons just to move from the negative to the positive as opposed to trying to split apart the water. Now the only thing left to do is to dip those two diodes into the salt water and instantly you can see those are all bubbles of pure hydrogen bubbling up off of the diode. And off the other side is oxygen, but less because there's there's twice as much hydrogen in water than oxygen. But it still is producing a bit of oxygen. Now as we bring it closer together, it actually becomes more violent a reaction. But if we touch the two diodes together, and I'll see if I can get this on camera, right there it short circuits and the electrolysis stops completely. And as soon as we bring them apart again, it starts up. Alright, so why don't we use electrolysis to create hydrogen gas because it seems like it's fairly efficient, but it's actually not. You can only strip off one hydrogen out of the H2O and the rest just turns back into water right in between. So there's a lot of inefficiencies in this system if we actually wanted to create hydrogen gas or oxygen. 
Isn't that cool? Science is so awesome. It. We've managed to split molecules into their individual atoms and create little bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen just by using a 9 volt battery and some screws. So that's really cool and it's easy to do. You don't have to make a system like this. Honestly, you could use two spoons and just stick them in some water and put a 9 volt battery on the end and you do the same thing. So I really encourage you to go and do this yourself because it makes science real and really quite fun. Let's move on. So the simplest explanation of what electrolysis actually is, is that you're giving electrons to one substance and taking electrons from another. And the reason why it's safe to use magnesium salt or uh, Epsom salts is because whatever is easiest to give and take electrons from is what will happen, just because it's not going to go out of its way to make something else happen. And water is easier to give and take electrons from than magnesium salt. Not so with table salt. Table salt is NaCl, also known as sodium chloride or table salt. Chloride ions are actually fairly weak. It's easier to remove electrons from chloride than it is from water, which means that when we run this experiment with table salt, we're going to be able to remove the hydrogen from the water, but no oxygen is going to be coming off. Instead of oxygen, it's going to be chlorine gas. So yeah, don't try this at home, and if you do try this at home, make sure you have really good ventilation around you, or do it outside maybe, and even then I don't recommend it. I'm just doing this for educational purposes for you. And we have lots of fans here and we're safe. Okay, so what we're going to change up for this next experiment is instead of a 9 volt battery, we're going to use a DC power supply. And this DC power supply is just going to allow me to really adjust and control exactly how much voltage and current and all the fun stuff is going through our solution. Instead of two stainless steel bolts, I'm going to use a couple of graphite rods that we took out of batteries, I think. Yeah, we took apart a battery a while ago. If you want to go watch that episode, it's up there. Oh, this is a great time. If you like this channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and the like button. It helps us out and it helps you out because that makes us make more science videos. Moving on. All right, so we're going to want to actually mix in the table salt and the distilled water. And there we go. We'll mix that in. I think I had that mixed up for about 250 milliliters and that is 260-ish. So that'll be just fine. We're going to have to stir that up make sure it's all dissolved. And I think just to save time, I'm going to use my little mixer again. This thing is so cool and totally unnecessary. You do not need one of these to do chemistry. Mmm, salt water. Okay, while that's getting ready there, I'm just going to attach these to, I'll make sure oh, it's not plugged in, attach these to that and to that. So I have my two graphite rods connected to the alligator clips, connected to the DC power supply. And I have my solution of water and table salt. So what is in the solution? Well, we have hydrogen and oxygen from the water, and we have chloride and sodium from the table salt. Okay, so when we run a current through, the, through these two rods, and you know what, let's just go ahead and turn that on here. So we're just going to put these together. When we run the current through these two rods, once it reaches a certain voltage, it's going to actually create a sea of ions inside of this solution. And those ions are going to be made up of everything that is here. So hydrogen, oxygen, chloride, and sodium. So the easiest way that these all bond together is the sodium is going to grab an oxygen and a an hydrogen. And they're going to bond them together and create caustic soda, which is also called sodium hydroxide. So it's going to create that inside solution, and that's going to remain in solution. So I'm just going to maybe bring these a bit, whoop, a bit closer together. There we go, and then bump the current a bit. And there's the bubble starting right there. So once the sodium hydroxide has been created in solution, the remaining ions are two hydrogen and two chloride, and those bond with each other and 
come out of solution. So as you can hopefully see, we have some hydrogen gas bubbling up and some chlorine gas bubbling up. Chlorine gas is not nice. It's, you don't want to breathe it in. And it's just, I know that this is a well-ventilated area and we have a very small amount coming out of solution. But still, you shouldn't do this yourself. See, even like that, even with a well-ventilated area, I can smell some chlorine gas. And if you can smell chlorine gas, you probably should stop doing what you're doing. So I'm just going to maybe turn this down a little bit there and turn the power off. There we go. And just like that, it stopped. So right now in this solution, we still have the salt water in here, but there is some lye, which again is that sodium hydroxide in solution. So you don't want to drink this because then you'd be drinking some sodium hydroxide, but it does, it, but it does dissolve fairly easily. So it's suspended in solution. Well, I hope that made sense. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. And if you have an experiment that you want to see done, I also want to know that because I'm almost guaranteed to get to it someday. This is Destructive Creativity. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe. It helps us out. See you next time. I'm Jonathan Allers. Bye!